What are the indications for OTR motion versus SSC motion? And how about the rhythm motion? Well, these are great questions and are the subject of this week's Friday question. When the endo sequence file was introduced over about a decade ago, we introduced the rhythm motion as the ideal motion for its use. This motion involved taking the file lightly to engagement and back three times before removing it from the canal and wiping it clean. Despite these instructions, many operators were putting way too much pressure on the file during each engagement or they were not cleaning the chip space frequently enough. So I introduced the SSC motion with our new ESX file to standardize this motion to a single stroke followed by cleaning the debris from the file. The SSC motion cleared the chip space much more frequently and greatly reduced the torque on the file. But unfortunately, many people, including myself, were sometimes too lazy to do the SSC motion exactly as it was intended. But can I tell you, we were either taking more than one stroke before wiping the file or engaging the file to resistance instead of engagement before wiping it. So I introduced the endo swipe to make SSC more efficient and this worked great with the ESX file which is currently one of the most popular instrumentation systems because of this safety and efficiency. But recently a new piece of technology has become available and that's the EndoSync motor by Brassler USA. We at Reload Endo decided to see how we can incorporate the advantages of this motor uh, and its special motion. You see, this slick little cordless handpiece introduced a new motion called OTR, which is short for Optimized Torque Reduction. And the way it works is that you enter a torque limit value into the handpiece, and then you operate the file in a normal rotary motion. As soon as the motor senses that the file has reached the program torque limit during engagement, the file will automatically disengage 90 degrees in a counterclockwise direction, and then after disengaging, it immediately spins back into clockwise rotary motion, unless the same torque limit is reached once again, in which case then it'll just go back again 90 degrees to disengage, followed by continuous rotation. Basically, the motor calculates the torque every half a rotation or 180 degrees and then it decides to move forward in rotation or whether it should disengage 90 degrees before moving forward with rotation. It's really simple. But as a result, if the torque limit is set very low, this motion almost resembles reciprocation. But if the OTR limit is set at a reasonable setting, then you can use it for rotation with the safety of knowing that OTR will kick in and disengage the file if that torque limit is reached. So the difference between OTR and reciprocation is that OTR is just rotation, except that it's a safe rotation and it considers the torque limit, whereas reciprocation is, uh, doesn't consider the torque limit of the file and it's just constant back and forth. You can think of the OTR as smart rotation. You're really using the complete 360 degree rotation when possible, and then the OTR will kick in and saves the day when it's most needed. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? When going back to our original question, what is then the difference between OTR and SSC? Okay, so you should now realize that whenever you do SSC, your wrist, your finger, and your brain is really telling you what is the torque limit that you would be used, that, that is being engaged on the file. and you're always trying to be careful and not exceed that torque limit by taking single stroke to engagement rather than um, to, to resistance. And that requires a, a pretty fine tactile sense. When you apply the OTR, you're really programming this tactile setting uh, that should be in your wrist and in your fingers into the handpiece, which then helps you improve the safety and reduce file separation by managing the torque on the file mechanically. So we've established that OTR is not reciprocation. If you ask me, instead of OTR, I would actually prefer to call it smart rotation. That's because the goal is to use the file in rotary motion only, but then have this safety disengagement mechanism ready in the background and ready to kick in when you've gone too far with your engagement. Basically, when the sensor in your wrist has malfunctioned. 
you can use OTR in two different ways. You can set the limit high and then you do your SSC with the goal of not engaging OTR. Or you can set it low and take your file to the point of OTR engagement and then pull it back and that will be your stroke. And that's just a matter of preference. I personally recommend that you try the first option, which means that for the ESX file, you would set the torque limit at 0.6 newton centimeter and then try to do your normal SSC without engaging the OTR. Here, OTR is just there to save you and you can do your SSC using safe continuous rotation. In a way, you can think of OTR as the radar and your goal is to stay stealth and below the radar. I hope this makes sense to you. You're basically using your normal SSC motion with rotation, but you now have the safety of knowing that OTR will kick in when you get too excited and begin to push too hard with your hand. In the EndoSync handpiece, you have five different options for OTR torque settings. You can be setting it at 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, or one Newton centimeters. So what is the correct OTR setting for doing root canals? Well, that depends on the kind of canal that you're dealing with. During our workshops, we use a torque limit of 0.6 Newton centimeter when we're using ESX in basic plastic blocks, and it works great. In a real tooth, however, this number may vary depending on the level of difficulty of the canal. I think a 0.6 Newton centimeter setting is probably a good start for a basic canal, but if you're dealing with a more advanced type of a canal, then you may want to consider lowering it to a 0.4. Uh, and I've played around with all the five settings, and in my opinion, anything about 0.6 uh, is probably a little too high unless you really have a very basic straight canal, or at the beginning when using an orifice opener. By setting the OTR limit to the lowest setting of 0.2 newton centimeter, you're constantly engaging OTR with the lightest touch against the tooth. And this almost gives the impression that you're using reciprocation with a 90-180 reciprocal angle. So uh, this setting is really reserved for very difficult and unpredictable canals, or if you are a heavy-handed individual uh, who pumps iron between patients. Yes, you know who you are. Okay, let's recap. In conclusion, SSC is the best operator motion for safe and efficient instrumentation with maximum debris reduction and removal from the canal and it can give you great results. OTR is a smart rotation by EndoSync that allows you to implement rotary SSC movement safely in the root canal based on the torque limit that you set in the handpiece. And finally, reciprocation. Well, pure reciprocation is a motion design for this guy. Okay, remember that root canal therapy is a high skill procedure requiring finesse and the lightest touch. For Real World Endo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this information helpful.